Now we're getting into the LF versus HF chart, and we just have these different um, uh, holders for the low frequency and the high frequency, the current and the old, so that when we draw out our chart, we can create these line diagrams, these lines here. You need to know the old position and the new position, so you can draw one line from one to the other. So I just had that thing underneath the piece of paper, grab it now with my finger so we can look at some uh, real data. All right. So this is just saying uh, determining if there's any pulse data. So when the uh, <coughs> system is receiving pulse data, the Q or the B uh, in front of the values instead of S, it's going to uh, print out, it's going to draw out that uh, chart that I just showed you, the line chart. And just doing it for each one here. And when it gets to the end of the window, it's just resetting it. All right, so this is the frequency plot, uh, the HZ graph, so to speak. This is the amperage that uh, is uh, we're going to see here. So this goes up depending on the amperage. The scale here would be the amperage. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I don't do a lot of retakes, so if I make some burps, that's the way it is. All right, so I, I also use these different variables. When I was setting up the scale, I wanted to make sure it was pretty close. So I would, I would actually hard code these variables, you know, set it to a thousand, so that that line prints out at a thousand all the time, so I could set my scale correct, correctly which was a good thing to do. It really made me focus on the data to make sure everything was actually uh, correct. All right, get down here. And uh, basically, this is printing out all those dots. It's drawing out the dots that are in the array. Right now, I have it set up to hold 500. Uh, that's up in the variables there. I'm not going to go back. But basically, you can change that. If you only want it to show 250, you just change that variable so that uh, it stays within the max dots, you know, the max dots variable. And right now I have it at 500, you can go to 1,000, do whatever. Uh, and then after that value, it just starts erasing the old dots while it prints new ones, so it kind of stabilizes. All right. And it's also showing you, um, prints out that little line that shows up every time it puts a new value in. And also the text. Uh, of that value and just this this keeps things from going uh, too far up and outside the bounds of the window uh, where it would be printing in the label. All right getting down to the PSD graph power spectral density and this is where the fast Fourier transform data is being displayed. Yeah, I'll give you an idea here so the IBI spectrum this data is being done in this uh, function that we're going to go over here and as we go down, we just want to make sure we have enough beats uh, before we display anything. Otherwise, we're going to uh, display a message saying we're, we're gathering data. Again, here's some raw values. You can, you can hard code it to set the scale. I'm just going to keep going down. This is just uh, printing out those lines um, and changing it every beat so you get a nice spectrum uh, graph analysis sort of looks like a graphic equalizer display and keep going down this prints out the labels dynamically so the fast Fourier transform depending on you know how many variables you've got uh, will give you the spectrum of the different Hertz and this is just uh, a variable first time um, to let it know that hey you know we, we've gone through the uh, FFT process once showed we showed up with the data we drew it out and now you can take away this gathering uh, data message <laughs> and just show the actual graph all right and I'm gonna go back up here we're almost done with the draw so this is just uh, incrementing the position of the main uh, heartbeat graph as it's going along and uh, It'll redraw the window and reset it here. We also 
are using this magnification. Uh, this is going to show up. You'll see it in different spots. Uh, you can change this variable. It's, it's a global variable. You can change it. So if you want to change the way the, the main waveform uh, draws out, you would do it there. And it'll make it larger or smaller. You could put in some sort of scale uh, mechanism for your mouse to change it uh, on the fly if you want. Uh, I didn't. You can just change, hard code it. I have it hard coded, so there you go. Anyways, so that's the end of the draw routine. Now we're going to get into the serial event. So anytime we have a serial event, it's just going to examine the data and see what we have and determine if there's uh, new heartbeat information, uh, the IBI and the beats per minute data, or if it's just uh, the signal data. So this, this is signal data. So if it contains the S, we know that, okay, this value is the signal value. And as we go along here, uh, it's just printing out different things and updating different things depending on that uh, S variable. Now here's the B variable or bits per minute so it's going to update the bits per minute and the positions there. And Q basically is the IBI data so we'll update our IBI and we do some other calculations now that we have an updated IBI. Uh, do all sorts of different uh, analysis on that data so that we can use it in our graphs. And at the very end we get down here and we take all our calculated data, all the data that's been uh, analyzed and put into the uh, proper array so that we can use it in the FFT. Take that data now that's in that global array and run the FFT process. Which is right down here, power spectral density and this is just going to go through the elements of that array and uh, run it through the fast the uh, fast Fourier transform. Here's some notes here. You know, can give you some ideas, a little bit more details on what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's the J transforms object, um, our float FFT, one-dimensional. And we're going to pass our array to it, and it's going to return an array of the values. And then we're going to take those values and perform some calculations. Real and imaginary numbers are going to come out. Like I said, the math can get really complicated. We're only using even data sets, so we don't have to deal with an, uh, odd data sets. But the code's there if you want to play around with that. And once we've got our real and imaginary data, we take that data and we're going to convert it into our power values. And that's just all fast Fourier transform talk. Um, you don't really need to know all that information. Um, that's basically how that works. And we get our high frequency and low frequency variables because as we go through the array and print everything out, we're going to separate all that into the proper uh, spot. So if, it, if it's over two, so one, two, and three, those first three elements go in the low frequency and everything else goes into the high frequency, which is the, the rest of them, the other six. And that's where we're getting our averages. And that's how that data is done. And these are just some end elements here that aren't being used, but you could enable them if you want. And that is pretty much it. That's all the code. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to just go to the top, scroll back down real quick again. And like I said, I'm going to post all this code on GitHub, and I'll post a link here in the video uh, when I get that done. And uh, there you go. You can use your pulse sensor amped. Uh, module with this code and get yourself a real nice display. Yeah, thanks for watching my video.